Well, hello again, and welcome again to another episode of Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. I'm your host, Irv Rich, and you're listening to our broadcast on internet radio, and today we're going to continue on in our study in the tabernacle. We only have one more episode, so it'll have to go, and this one here we're going to be talking about the uh, the golden candlesticks, first of all. And, and all these papers were uh, by Daniel C. Stanton. Uh, I just want to give him credit for all these notes that we've been going through. Very good uh, study on the tabernacle. Now, if you look at Exodus 25, verses 31 to 40, and Exodus 27, 20, through 21, you'll find the uh, candlesticks here. In the holy place, there were three pieces of furniture, the table, the altar of incense, and the golden candlesticks. Now, we will be discussing the golden candlesticks first, and we'll look at the other stuff too. The golden candlesticks uh, was a very important item within the holy place. It was very costly. And it was very um, uh, important item uh, in in the holy place, and the holy place, you know, uh, was only entered once a year. By the way, okay, it was very costly, and it was made of beaten gold, and it was uh, composed of a shaft and branches. On the ends of the branches, there were lamps. And finally, they were oil for the lamps. Now, it was a light from the candlesticks that the priest performed the duties before God. There was no natural light in the tabernacle. Now, look at the spiritual application. The buds and the flowers, now they represent the resurrection. The gold represents the deity of the Lord, and there was no wood. Uh, so there was no uh, uh, pointing to the, his humanity. Note that the gold was beaten. Uh, it had endured punishment and the Savior, as of the Savior. And Isaiah wrote, It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He was bruised for our iniquities, Isaiah 53, uh, 5. Uh, and 10. <clears throat> now, God, God did this uh, to the Lord, not just for our salvation, but that he might bring the church into existence, the birth of the bride of Christ. Peter said, unto you who believe, he is precious. Note the weight of the candlesticks around 90 talents or 94 pounds, they were heavy, at present day's prices. Uh, and, and they're guessing, he's just guessing at approximately $30,000. Well, if you look at the price of gold today, that's probably three, four times that. All we know is that the candlestick is, uh, in its weight, is general in its general appearance, we know nothing of the dimensions, the characteristics, as a type of the Lord Jesus. This is unique. No limitations can be put on our Lord, who is omnipotent, omnipresent, and, uh, and uh, 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 well, all the all the attributes. I can't pronounce some of these words. I get confused, I guess. He's not only is unlimited and unrestricted, but his value is phantomless. What is thy beloved more than anything, any other beloved? This was out of the Songs of Solomon, I believe. This uh, incarn uh, incarnated world of immeasurability. He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily and full of grace and truth. We are not redeemed with silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus. 
the shaft. The shaft reminds us uh, of John 15, 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. The branches, uh, three on either side and one on the top with all its parts and attached to its shaft, the stem, signifying the union and a relationship with Christ. When a marriage takes place, God sees two people becoming one flesh spiritually. We become one with Christ at conversion. Paul likens this in Romans to a marriage. The branches, uh, Matthew 5, 14 says, Ye are the light of the world, as long as Christ was in the world. And he was the light of the world. He still is, but not in a fleshly body. He meets individuals, you and me, to shine in the dark world. The Lord uh, admonishes us, let your light so shine before men. Uh, see Revelation one twenty, the church, the churches are the description as lamps stands. From them show forth the gospel light. So today, true local churches shine in the uh, dispensation of grace, where the influence of the church in the world. See Second Thessalonians two. The seven lamps in Revelation 4, 5, John speaks of the seven lamps of fire. They are the seven spirits of God. There is no light in the world today except as the Holy Spirit sets on fire the children of God. All efforts is brutal unless energized and motivated by the Holy Spirit. The number of seven in the word speaks of a divine perfection. This is seen in the seven lamps placed on the candlesticks, uh, representing the Holy Spirit uh, indwelling the Church of Jesus Christ. Now the oil for the lamps, this speaks of the Holy Spirit. There are numerous instances where oil is used as a type of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 1 9, for instance, says, Thy God has anointed thee with the oil, the Spirit of gladness. This also is uh, also of a parable of the ten virgins in Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Salvation cannot come to anyone without the supernatural works, workings of the Holy Spirit upon the heart of the individuals. In the Holy Spirit, uh, who convicts, see John 14, uh, of the individual. It is the Holy Spirit who convicts. I read that. It is the Holy Spirit hovering over the face of the waters and the spoken word of God that brought light to this world. It was the same Holy Spirit who hovers over Mary and caused her to conceive and bring forth the Son, Jesus, the light of the world. The candlesticks was made from beaten gold. The gold oil and was made from beaten olives. Uh, this possibly represents the suffering of the Holy Spirit. We must remember that the Holy Spirit is a person who has feelings as you and I. Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit. The olives uh, was beaten, not just crushed, uh, in order that the lamps might have oil and give forth light. Now the only light from the candlesticks came uh, from the from the only light uh, in the tabernacle. There was no windows, no natural light. Even the priest did not carry a light as he performed his sacred duties. 
in the holy place. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Who cannot approach God and worship except through Jesus Christ? The light of the world for the worship of or salvation, we need Christ. Now we have the showbread. The showbread must make uh, was made of fine flour. This spoke of the Lord. No roughness, no ingredients. The showbread truly uh, spoke of the sinless character of Christ. Uh, truly, uh, this was the Son of God. And uh, a fine, no fault in this man. You know, I may also speak of the suffering of Christ in the midst of the suffering brought into uh, the fire of God's judgment. The showbread, because the food of the priest became the food of the priest, we also should feed on the bread of life. The table of showbread in Exodus 25 verses 23 through 30. One, the material, wood and gold. This is representative of the humanity and deity of Christ. It was born of a woman. He was born of a woman, born uh, in the flesh, yet incarnated son of God. Now two, the priest could not sit at the table the priest always stood in the presence of God. They, their work was never done. See Hebrews 10, verses 11 and 12. Every priest standeth, but this man, after he offered, sat down. Now three, typical uh, signif signifying fellowship. Uh, Revelation 3.20 says, Open the door, come in, sup with him. The Lord yearns for your fellowship. The table of showbread speaks of communion and fellowship with the bread of life. Now the crown uh, speaks of exaltation. There were two, a crown of thorns and a crown of glory. The unleavened bread speaks of the sinlessness and perfection of Christ. Uh, Leaven speaks of evil. There is no evil in the Lord. While speaking of the living word, we may also speak of the written word. The end.